Welcome to the April layout update for the Crescent Shares in Leverington. I want to start out by giving a big shout out to all of my new subscribers. Thanks to Sparky's video, I gained about 20 or 25 new subscribers. I'd also like to say thank you to all my existing subscribers. Now, if you don't already subscribe, please hop on down below and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another update on this layout. I hope you all are well and have been staying safe in these difficult times. Several weeks ago, a younger user asked me on one of my Instagram posts when my layout was going to be finished. It was at that point that I felt that I had to share the ultimate truth of model railroading. As you all know, a layout is never finished. Individual projects may work their way towards completion, but it's never done. And on that note, I feel like I've made some great progress finally getting the bridges not just built and in place, but actually installed. In particular, I am really happy with how this little scene here is working out. Turns out the rubbing alcohol on the 90% IPA that I use to wet ballast, I mean, that stuff is... I shouldn't be using it to wet ballast right now. That stuff is worth more than gold, but that's a different story. It turns out when it comes into contact with the latex hobby paint that I've used to paint these walls, it has a reaction with the paint and actually creates a really cool weathering effect that I'm going to keep. I've then, on some of these, you can see right there where I haven't gotten to it yet, right there on the first step, at, went back over with a black wash, and I think it's creating a really good, dirty, you know, 1970s in Philadelphia kind of effect. I'm also happy with the way this little scene over here is turning out. I'm working on a way to get a larger platform here for the... St let's get that back in focus. Larger platform here for the station. Um, it's going to be sitting on, I think, some of that sidewalk material to just kind of create a big concrete pad. And then the end here is going to be covered up by the fascia. The other big thing I've been able to do is I built this firehouse. This uh, firehouse is a lifelike kit that was given to me as a gift uh, by my good friends Robert and Ashley for a White Elephant Christmas celebration. So I got around to putting that together, and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. The colors that I used are uh, loosely based on the actual uh, firehouse up in Maniunk right by the train station on Main Street. Other new additions, I've been able to do a little bit more work just cleaning up the ballasting in the yard here a little bit. Um, I'm not going any farther with that scenery because I realized I'm actually going to have to put a path from the future yard office and switch tower over here, like into the yard so the crews can go do that thing that they do. I've also been working on extending. I haven't been able to, that glue is still drying. It's holding down this new uh, coarse turf. That won't be quite that bushy in the long run. The other thing that's new is I have these three Pennsylvania Railroad 90-ton hoppers. There's actually kind of a funny story behind these. There was a posting on eBay for three Jersey Central two-bay hoppers, just like these, that would have been perfect on this layout. So I got really excited, put in a bid, paid 18 bucks for it, and then the package showed up and it had Pennsylvania Railroad 90-ton hoppers in it instead. So I hopped on eBay, messaged the seller, and said, hey, I think you made a mistake. And he got back to me and said that he actually accidentally relisted an item he'd already sold, refunded me my money, and sent me these hoppers anyway. So, kind of cool, kind of fun. I think I'm not going to keep them Pennsylvania Railroad long term. If I get bored, I may make these Penn Central hoppers. Kind of a dirty, quick, crappy looking overpatch. So, that should be a fun project at some point. I also got a decoder for SD45 number 7602. While I was in there and I had it taken apart, I also did some color correction on the handrails. There, let's get that in focus. I didn't take the yellow paint all the way down. I kind of intentionally feathered it off because something you see looking at prototype photos is that after they've been in service for more than a few weeks, the only yellow part of the handrail was the top where people's hands were, you know, 
rubbing on it and keeping the dirt off. The stanchions that it's connected to very quickly got very dirty and got a black-brown color going, so I just left them in the raw black plastic that we got them in from Kato, and I think, ultimately, why won't we focus? The effect looks pretty good. I've done some speed matching and paired it with uh, my C630 5301 here for a nice big heavy hauling power lash up to drag my ever-expanding Coltrane. Well, I think that's pretty much it. This little project down here has taken me quite a lot of time, but I'm really happy with the way that it's turning out. As always, if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to drop a comment down below. And as always, thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye.